I'm gonna be breaking down every UFC fight ever, starting with UFC one, the beginning. In 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 the beginning, in the beginning, yeah. The first UFC fight ever was between a sumo wrestler and a third degree racist. And you might think this fool's got hands cause he looks like the heavyweight Robbie Lawler. But he claimed that his best attribute was his heart, which is concerning. That's like when you get set up on a blind date and they tell you that she has a great personality. Now this was a great hop switch from such a big dude and the aggression is commendable but he didn't think it through. That fool had less plan B than Hobby Lobby. And he came in like a wrecking ball but the chain broke off just like that fool's teeth when he got kicked in the mouth. And then Gerard tried to give him the anesthesia after the dental work because he's dyslexic. But by then Irv Dean's illegitimate grandfather stepped in. What a coincidence. He didn't even get knocked out. Nate Diaz bleeds more than that when he puts on a shirt. The first UFC fight ever was a victim of early stoppage maybe Irv Dean is just really nostalgic I at this time I don't um I don't see that I should do something different it's hard to look back and see the truth about people you love I know what you're thinking is this an underground Mormon fight club actually it's the second ever UFC fight and I know it's hard to tell because of the girdle but these fools are bigger than cereal and Nogano and that's why they almost broke the cage a lot of people don't know this but the original octagon was made out of pool noodles and magnets. Today, everything is top of the line and state of the art. Of course, the fighters have to work side jobs to make it all possible. But that's a sacrifice that Dana White is willing to make. But the cage was nothing compared to the fighting. This fool was pulling hair like if it was a world star fight. And it was probably because this fool kept socking him in the back of the head. But neither of those things were illegal back then. The only rule was that you couldn't expose the Gracie family scam. This fool even ended the fight by auditioning for American History X. Now say goodnight. <laughs> Pride only hurts. It never helps. Royce Gracie's first UFC fight was weird. And I'm not even talking about the glove. I'm talking about the commentary. These fools were saying what he was gonna do before he even did it. And when they weren't doing that, they were talking about the Gracie's like if it was an infomercial. The weirdest thing is the one dude that was doing all the talking didn't even start commentating until this fight. He was nowhere to be found during the first two fights. He was probably waiting for the script to print so that he would know what to say. I caught up with Rob Machado so that I could ask him about this. What was it like to spread Gracie propaganda? It's a lot of work. But I can't blame him. With the Gracie family's deep roots within the Illuminati, it's no telling how far they'll go. This Golden Gloves champion didn't throw a single punch. And he tapped out when there wasn't even a submission. Do you smell it? People will do some strange things when they're feeling that pressure. Oh, so you thought Conor McGregor invented red panty night? Break out the red panties. Ken Shamrock was looking like a thick Robert De Niro at a Baywatch audition way back at UFC 1. But it's like they say, don't mistake red panties for weakness. Shamrock was so aggressive that he did the first ever intense stare down in UFC history. I'm standing here. You make a move. The other fighters were just listening to the referee, but this fool was listening to the voices in his head, and they told him to go for the takedown. Patrick Smith had just seen Royce Gracie fight, so he thought he could just hug that fool and everything would be all right. But he didn't realize that Royce Gracie had that plot armor because his family controlled the event. And he also didn't realize that Ken Shamrock knew how to choke feet. Smith tried to do it back, but he didn't know how. He looked like when my lady wants a massage, and I act like I don't know how to do it, so she won't ask me anymore. But he wasn't convincing enough, and he paid the price for it. Rookie. Soldiers, in the name of democracy, let us all unite! Gerard Gordo, AKA American History Smash, went into the fifth ever UFC fight with a broken hand, but he's fighting a broken man, so it doesn't matter. Kevin Rozier had an awkward fighting style. He looked like a baby learning how to walk, but nobody childproofed the cage. And Gordo doesn't like kids, unless they're purebred. And he starts giving them that tough love in the form of leg kicks. Conor McGregor popularized the leg kick in the modern era, but people don't realize that fools were crying for Dr. Stoppage from the get. <laughs> On top of that, they were in Denver, Colorado, and it's hard to breathe over there. It's almost as bad as Fresno, and Rozier had just lost 45 pounds, and he was still fighting. 
Gravity. Wants to bring me down. Rozier was a respectable champion outside the UFC, but it just didn't convert. That happens sometimes. And Gordo was what Brendan Schaub would affectionately refer to as the Great White Hope. Nipsu Cow! My back is killing me. UFC One was way back in 1993. And some of you fools are still using the same wallet that you used to buy the pay-per-view. Rocking a wallet like this today is like trying to be a UFC champion because you own a gi. That's the thing of the past. The Ridge wallet is for the modern era and it helps you to discard what is useless with its slim design while still holding up to 12 cards and your cash. Do not adjust your screen. This is what it looks like when you're sitting on a fat wallet. A bunch of you fools are giving up your backs as we speak. You don't want to do it when you're rolling with the homies, but you'll do it on a daily basis for that leather squatter in your back pocket. And why do you want to be a cochino anyway? Your wallet probably smells like pedo. The ridge wallet goes in your front pocket. That way you can keep an eye on fools with bad intentions. My wallet's gone! And if they try to scan you from a distance, it's RFID blocking. And it's 10% off when you go to ridge.com for forward slash Voto and put in the promo code Voto. The Ridge Wallet might have a lifetime warranty, but your back doesn't. You know, it is better without this big wallet. Camera one, camera two. Today's BJJ is filled with guard pulling and a uh, butt scoop boogie. But Royce Gracie was a lot more aggressive. He went at Ken Shamrock like he was going to bust the Jorge Masvidal. And by that, I don't mean a sucker punch and a bad gimmick. I'm talking about that flying knee. He faked it for the takedown. And Shamrock wasn't expecting that. He actually wore his chonies as a deterrent. It was the early 90s. He figured fools would be trying to stay at least a full salute away from him. But if anyone's comfortable with chonies, it's Brazilians. Shamrock tested the wrong ethnicity. He underestimated Royce's attributes. Ken was the shoot fighter and he didn't expect the BJJ practitioner to shoot on him. Shamrock thought that BJJ stood for barely jujitsu because it was like a watered down version of jujitsu where everybody just wants to lay down. So he thought he was going to get the easy leg lock like earlier that night. But Royce choked him out with his gi instead. And that fool already hated clothes. That would be like a vegan getting choked out by a hot dog. I didn't feel him tapping. Did it? <laughs> in the first ever UFC championship fight, Royce Gracie needed to prove that 90% of fights go to the ground, but he found himself in that 10%, and Gerard Gordo was grabbing the cage like if he was Sean O'Malley, but Royce loosened him up with the headbutt. He made that fool start tripping and biting. Gordo admitted that he bit him so that he would remember him forever because he has that separation anxiety, and that's why he was squeezing him so tight. But Royce is a uh, generous wrist grappler so he squeezed them back and he gave on that this is gonna hurt me more than it hurts you for reals who headbutt someone from behind in a real fight that's the first and only time i ever seen a rear naked headbutt and it's the first and only time i ever seen someone try to tap out with the morse code supposedly royce didn't want to let go to pay that fool back for biting it royce gracie became the first ufc champion ever and now this is what fighting looks like flacco open the door it seems like we may have all been lied to. I thought this was the first UFC fight ever, but I was wrong. This was the first UFC fight, and a lot of people don't know about it because it wasn't on the VHS. Because the Gracies didn't want you to know that a non-Gracie executed the first ever rear naked choke in the UFC. And he did it in 52 seconds. That's faster than Royce Gracie ever did it. And the ironic thing is, he learned it from the Gracies because of that Gracie terrorism. The Gracies referred to it as the Gracie Challenge for tax purposes. But we all know what it was. Jason DeLuccia defeated Trent Jenkins in a non-pay-per-view match before the event started. So he will be the alternate if anyone dropped out. His striking looked good. He threw spinning stuff and he choked them out. But the world never got to see it. And I suspect foul play. No decorrer da luta, o Chucala chegou sendo a finalização e ele bateu. Assim que o Chucala soltou, ele veio dizer que não tinha batido. Aí os jurados e os juízes entraram numa discussão. 